everyone, it's Annie, and today I am so excited to be filming this. I have a vlog for you guys. I am going to be reading all six of the Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist for 2021 and predicting who the winner will be. <laughs> I am really excited to do this. I am wanting to read most of the titles on this list already, so it was kind of a good opportunity to get those books finally off my TBR. So I am really excited to get started. Let me tell you what the six books are. First, we have Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jiasi. Then, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Piranese by Susanna Clark, which I have already read, actually. I've read Piranese before. I think I read it in February, and I liked it. I gave it four stars. The synopsis of Piranese, I'll tell you it now because I'm not going to be reading it in this vlog again. It is that there is this man named Piranese, and he is trapped in this labyrinth by the sea, and it is this huge, winding, empty house with lots of statues, and he is the only one that lives there, except sometimes this other man comes and talks to him. And it's a really suspenseful, very mysterious, fantasy-esque novel. Super, super creative, and I am very pleased to see it on this list. I think it definitely deserves a spot on this list. And then for the last three, we have No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones, which I have been wanting to read, so I'm really glad that I'm getting the chance to do it for this vlog. It's set in Barbados, which I've never read a book set in Barbados, so I'm ready to learn. <laughs> and then lastly, we have Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. So, I'm not sure which book I'm going to be starting with, but I am very interested in How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House, Transcendent Kingdom, and The Vanishing Half, so probably one of those. <laughs> I'll be back with an update. I have finished How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones, and wow, <laughs> it was a very quick read, but it was super hard-hitting and 
it had so many characters, so much going on, but usually in books like that I find that I have a hard time keeping track of the differences between the characters and what they're all doing. But with this book, I had a very easy time. I didn't feel confused at all. I thought that Lala as a main character was so interesting and very multifaceted. And I think that Sherry Jones did a masterful job, especially for a debut, fitting all the things that she fit into this book and all its complexities into such a short book. It was only like eight and a half hours on audiobook. So that's a really short book. It's under 300 pages if you read it physically, and I adored it. I gave it five stars. I couldn't not. I was captivated the whole time. I knew nothing about Barbados before this, and I thought it was just a wonderfully crafted novel, and I'd love to read more of her work. I finished Transcendent Kingdom and I loved it. I gave it five stars. Honestly, it would not surprise me at all if this book won the whole women's prize this year. It was breathtakingly amazing. Yad Yassi is a genius, absolute genius. I want to know how her brain works, how she writes such amazing books. Because I also read Homecoming in 2020, and I loved that. I think I might like this one a little bit more, but honestly, it, all her works are amazing. Oh my gosh. If you haven't picked up any of her books yet, please pick them up, because she is not an author to overlook. I, I loved this book so much. I really... I loved how it really focused on Gifty, the main character, and her kind of tumultuous relationship with religion and God, especially as someone who has, who grew up religious, Catholic actually, and hasn't gone to church in a while. Um, it's very, very, it was really, really interesting to read. I really loved hearing her thoughts, and there's many parts where you're reading entries of her journal, and I absolutely loved that. I think I also loved the fact that it focused on the relationship between Gifty and her mother, and I mean, it focused on their entire family, but it really, really focused on Gifty and her mother, and also how growing up very Christian really affected Gifty's life in different ways as well, like in relationships and her relationship with science, of course, is a big part of the book. I think this book is so important. Obviously, the writing was stellar. I mean, oh my gosh, it was amazing. I was immediately captivated. I read it in one day. I just couldn't, couldn't stop. I don't know if this will win, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did.
finished The Vanishing Half and I ended up giving it four stars. I really, really liked it. I totally understand all of the hype that it got. And there were some things that I was super surprised about, like the amazing trans representation. I did not know that this book had such great trans representation because all of the reviews I've seen on booktube for it didn't mention that. <laughs> and I also didn't know how big a part the main character's daughters played in the story. It's not just about the main twins, it's about their daughters and their different lives because of the choice that their mothers made. If you don't know, The Vanishing Half is about these two twins growing up. They are black but light-skinned enough that they could pass as white. One twin, Desiree, decides to live her life as a black woman, marries a very dark-skinned man, has a very dark-skinned daughter. The other twin, Stella, decides to pass as white, and she marries a white man and has a very light-skinned daughter. It was just, it was really, really interesting, and the story itself I am very glad that I read. The reason I gave this four stars is because there were some bits, I'm not sure if it's because I listened to it on audio, maybe in print there are like line breaks that make this easier, but even within a chapter there is like sometimes they switch times and they don't tell you. So there's times where like they're with someone and then the next line they're broken up but then the next paragraph they're back together and like you're just supposed to realize that they're in different times and it's a little bit confusing and that can conf it it kind of like kind of took me out of the story because i was like wait what's happening <laughs> so i think that could have been a little bit more organized a little bit clearer um, but again, maybe it's clearer in print, I'm not sure. Other than that, I think I really liked the story, but I think I really wanted more about Jude and Reese. Jude is the daughter of the twin who decided to live her life as a black woman, and I really liked her a lot, and I loved her boyfriend Reese, and I wanted a little bit more of them. I. I don't know. I know that's this isn't their story, but it kind of is. So I that's my thoughts on this book. I really, really enjoyed it, and I'm so glad that I read it. I think this is a really amazing pick for the Women's Prize. I'm not sure if I would... It might win, honestly. I'm not sure how they judge. I know it's not like a popularity prize, like the Goodreads Choice Awards, and rightly so. But this book is so, so popular for good reason, so I'm not sure. Personally, I would not have it be the winner. For me, that is still Transcendent Kingdom, but we'll see. Okay, I am ready to go to work, but I just want to show you guys these pants that I recently got. I got them from a secondhand store for $5, and they have pockets, like full-size pockets, and I am very happy, and yes, I'm ready to go. Hello! So I finished Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller, and it was good. It just, like, it was good. The writing was definitely good. It was very unique. In terms of synopsis, it's about these twins, Julius and Jeannie, who are 51 years old, they are living with their mother in an old rundown cottage, and her, their mother dies, <laughs> and they are left to deal with the consequences of her death. And it's a very sad novel, very sad, um, not very much uplifting, lots of bad things happen, <laughs> so it wasn't really enjoyable. Honestly, I wish prizes like this had more, like, I don't know, fantasy or sci-fi or 
something that's not depressing literary fiction. Maybe that would be nice. <laughs> but I liked it. I gave it three stars. It was quite short. I read it in a few hours. I really don't have that much else to say, to be honest. Anyway, <laughs> I just got home from work and I'm exhausted and I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna... I'm gonna see which book I choose next. I'm probably just gonna make myself a nice cup of tea and try and relax. Maybe watch some Hugging of Blind Manor. That's what I've been watching recently. So maybe I'll do that with a nice cup of tea. I love it. finished. No one is talking about this this morning. It was unique. <laughs> I don't think I liked it, but I can definitely understand the point that the author was trying to make. I appreciate the point, but I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> like, I didn't really enjoy the reading experience or listening experience it was and I didn't feel myself going well like this is great and deserving of a literary award <laughs> like it is definitely different very different from other books obviously that's the point I don't know people said that they laughed and like it was really witty and funny but I didn't think it was honestly if for most of it I was just like cringing because yes, okay, I am on YouTube, and I have a Facebook and a Twitter, but I don't have an Instagram. I mean, I do, but I don't have it on my phone, and I barely use it. I hardly ever go on Twitter or Facebook, even though I have them. I mean, I am on social media, and I understood all of the references and all the things that she said in the book, and I definitely understand that it is accurate. And I definitely get the point that she was trying to make, but it just wasn't an enjoyable reading experience. <laughs> it just served to remind me why I don't like going on social media very much. I really... I wish part two was longer. I wish... If the book... This is... Okay, this is... This is my own personal opinion. This is my preference. If the book was about what the plot was in part two because part one had absolutely zero plot but if the book were a book about a woman and her sister and her sister's baby and the plot that happens in part two if you know I would have probably really liked it if it didn't have anything to do with the internet and it wasn't trying to make some kind of social commentary on how we use social media I probably would have liked that book much better, to be honest, but that is my own personal opinion. That's not what the author was trying to do. So, it seems like me and the author have a difference of opinions. Uh, honestly, I can't see this winning. At least I, I hope it doesn't, because I think many of the books I've already read for this deserve it much more. <laughs> but, alright, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> If you read this book, I hope you like it more than I did. I am not really sure what I'm gonna rate this. I would say three stars, but I think that's too good. But then I feel like two stars is too bad. I'm not sure. I For now, it has no rating from me on Goodreads anyway. But you guys know my thoughts. Okay, so I have finished all six books on the Women's Prize for Fiction 2021 shortlist. So let's do a little bit of a wrap up. I will go from the ones I least liked to the ones I like the most and then give you my prediction for the winner. So the one I least enjoyed was No One Is Talking About This. 
it just wasn't for me personally. You know, some stories will be for you, some won't. I definitely understand the merit of it, but I ended up giving it 2.5 stars. And yeah, you guys know the reasons for that. The second to last was definitely not bad. It was Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. And I definitely see the merit in this again, of course. And I understand why it moved to the short list from the long list. Having read some of the other titles that were on the long list, to be honest, I definitely like this one better than some of the ones that didn't make it onto the short list. So I think this was good. It was a very unique story. But again, it just, it isn't something that I would normally go for, you know, when I'm looking for something to read. I just felt like it wasn't written for me. It just wasn't my cup of tea necessarily, but I definitely see why a lot of people would like it. And yeah, I like it. <laughs> Three stars. And then next would be Piranesi. <laughs> um, I, like I said earlier, I read this back in February before I even knew that it would be on the women's prize lists. And I gave this four stars back when I read it. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was superbly creative, really mysterious, and really kept you interested and invested in the story. But if you watched my wrap up where I read this book, I thought that I could have done with a little bit more, not explanation exactly, because I like not knowing exactly what was happening, but I could have done with just a little bit more. The book was very, very short. And I feel like it could have been a little bit more, like we could have gotten more from the story and from the characters, but I did really like Piranesi. And then I have The Vanishing Half, which I also gave four stars. Again, I really, really enjoyed this. There were just a couple of things like the pacing and the weird time skips within chapters that threw me off, but I did really enjoy this one and I totally see it totally deserves a spot on this short list. And then top two books for me. <laughs> At the first five stars we have How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones. I loved this book so much. Incredibly violent. It has like almost every act of violence that could possibly be put on a page inside this tiny tiny book but don't let that deter you it didn't deter me and I'm usually like not a big fan of that but I absolutely loved this book I think that it's dark gritty violent subject matter was handled very very well by the author and it wasn't like gratuitous in any way at least I didn't feel like that I really connected with the main character and her struggles and I felt like I was there with her and I absolutely loved this. I am so pleasantly surprised that this is on the shortlist because I have seen some other predictions back before we knew what the shortlist was and a lot of people didn't think this was going to make it and I'm so so pleased that it did. And then last but certainly not least. For the last five stars, we have Transcendent Kingdom by Yad Yassi. I adored this book so much. I, I loved it so much. It's definitely one of the top books I've read this year and this month. I, I love it. And so it goes without saying that if it were me, if I were a judge, which I am not, but if I were on the Women's Prize for Fiction committee, I would give Transcendent Kingdom the prize for 2021. But if I were to make my prediction <laughs> as a booktuber, in my professional booktuber opinion, I would say it would have to be a toss up between Transcendent Kingdom and The Vanishing Half, just because of the general reception that both of these books have gotten from the public and from professional book reviewers and podcasters and things. I think that it's going to be one of these two. I really hope I'm right. <laughs> but either way, all of these books are totally worth a read, I, I believe. 
Uh, of course, it depends on your personal preferences, but I think they chose really, really great books for the shortlist this year, and I am very glad that I read them all. And I, I just loved this experience of vlogging this. I really, really enjoyed it. It was something I always looked forward to at the end of my workday, so I am really, really happy to do this. So thank you guys so much for watching this fun vlog. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let me know down below what your prediction is for the winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. I am really, really curious what you think will win. So thank you again for watching. If you liked it, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye!